I want you to imagine the following scenario. You're born in 1899, on the 3rd of April. And so you turn 18 on April 3rd, 1917. You're young, you're in the prime of your life, and the next day, the American Congress declares war on the Axis powers, and thus the United States enters into World War I. You're now 18, so of course you're going to be drafted and sent over there, and there's no small chance that you'll be injured or lose your life. In particular, you'll be stuck in the trenches, charging into enemy gunfire and explosives. And it's not just that your life could end, it's that your life could end in a particularly egregious and horrible way. Now, I want you to imagine that you are born in the year 1999, on the 3rd of April, and you turned 18 in 2017, which means you're 25 now. You weren't sent off to a war. You didn't die in the trenches. You didn't die to shrapnel. You didn't get an infection. Your limbs didn't have to be amputated. And I want you to think about these two scenarios set apart 100 years. You see, it's absolutely true that there are a lot of negative things happening in the world. There always are, and human beings are naturally drawn to the more negative. It's classic, right? We're always attuned to danger and bad things. We don't really get excited for the most part when we hear about puppies or kittens being rescued or teenagers mowing the lawn of elderly people. And that's especially true in the attention economy. I contribute to this as well as a content creator. A lot of people would describe me as black pilled, in fact, which may or may not be true depending on your perspective. But the reality is, oftentimes things are not black and white. Sure, some things are, such as getting hit by a Mack truck or taking a bullet in the head if you're on the receiving end. Those are black and white scenarios. But the question I'm trying to pose to you here, if you compare the 100-year separation in the thought experiment I gave you, is, was it really better back then? Well, some things were. Assuming you'd survive World War I, you probably would have come home, found a wife, gotten married, had kids. It almost would have been arranged for you. And if it hadn't been arranged, it probably would have happened through very natural, very conventional, and I stress conventional means, meaning that convention would have pushed you to get married and convention would have pushed some woman to marry you. But beyond that, assuming you'd survived World War I, you'd gone on to get married and have kids, your life would be filled with essentially never-ending obligations. On top of that, you would have a much lower level of technology, meaning you could easily die of something like the flu or even a cold, certainly a bacterial infection, and something like a hernia could kill you because there would be surgery around to save you in case that happened. And I'm talking about this because oftentimes, very frequently in fact, you see a lot of traditionalists, guys in the manosphere, but also guys who tend to be very right-wing, who engage in a sort of ancestor worship and talk about the good old days. And one thing they ignore is the bad things back then. We're also hyper-focused on the negative stuff in the current year. And a lot of stuff is negative, without a doubt. And we forget about the good stuff, especially as men. Now, sure, a lot of people make the argument, and I don't really buy it for the most part, that war is glorious and it's an exhilarating experience. Some men will report that, but it's a tiny fraction of men. It's a minority. For most men, war is terrifying, it's horrifying, it's dangerous, it's not fun, and most men would prefer, sound shocking, to work their part-time job where they get their paycheck so they can pay for their video games versus die in the trenches of World War I. That sounds shocking to many, but it's true. And you'll get traditionalist types and people on the right lament the loss of real men and a world where men could be men. But what does that even mean at the end of the day? All that means is even more obligations than you already have in your current life. Because although it's true that freedom can sometimes be too much and having too much freedom can be too much, having too many constraints can feel stifling and suffocating. And living 100 years ago, that would have been your life, just full of constraints. The things you can do now, the things you're allowed to do now, would not have been permissible or even possible, not just due to more limited technology, but due to all the traditions and conventions that a lot of traditionalists and people on the right worship and revere. So what I'm trying to say basically is, it's bad, but it's not all bad. Now, I would never claim to be a happy camper or a particularly content individual. That's manifestly not the case. But I do appreciate certain things. I appreciate, for example, not being weighed down by a thousand different obligations that never end. If you'd lived a hundred years ago, that would have been your life. From dawn to dusk until the next day, the next day, and the next day, until you drop dead. You see, we're living in a time now where it's very easy to take leisure and leisure time for granted. In fact, again, in conservative and right-wing circles, 
a lot of these guys, at least nominally, verbally, decry leisure as something destructive and terrible. Now, maybe some men would, in fact, prefer to live in 1917 or 1924 versus now, but I certainly wouldn't, and I know plenty of men who wouldn't either. And I understand the appeal of this, this reminiscing about the so-called good old days and the good old times. All the ideologies we're familiar with now didn't exist, and society on the whole was a lot more conformist. Everybody had to conform to their role. There was a lot less individual freedom and expression. The trade-off for that was that everything was regulated, and things were expected of you, but most of the time, people met those expectations. These days, things are chaotic, unpredictable, disorganized, but you have a lot more freedom of choice in terms of what you want to do in terms of job, career, the games you want to play, the entertainment you engage in, and the people that you associate with. With the internet, new opportunities and possibilities have been opened up, especially in regard to the final point. How many of you have grown up with people that you fundamentally didn't really get along with, but because you were in the same spot, you just kind of hung out with them, you talked to them? Does it sound familiar? Because that was my life for the most part. And I've talked to lots of people over the course of many years who've been online a lot, and they echo the same sentiment. So although things are bad, I don't think they're quite as bad as a lot of people say. And I also think a lot of the people who reminisce, who wish and yearn for the good old days, if they were actually put in that situation, yeah, maybe some of them would prefer it and like it, but a lot of them wouldn't. They would discover the reality is that things back then, in many respects, were worse. Yes, the regulated orderliness of the time was probably better for a lot of people, but if you like freedom and choice, it definitely wasn't a time to be alive. At the end of the day... Everything is a trade-off. That's just the nature of life, right? And it's all too easy to just focus on the negative stuff and the stuff that is not good. I do that a lot. I mean, you watch my channel, right? But I also don't think that it was necessarily better in the past. It was just different. And given your experiences today and given what you know today, would you really want to, say, die in the trenches of World War I or even surviving that live in a world where all you have is obligations and conventions with none of the freedom and flexibility you have now? Personally, that wouldn't be my choice. And I've talked to a lot of men, even young men, and this is mostly applicable to young men, who upon further inspection echo the same sentiment, meaning they wouldn't want to live back then. So you could kind of look at this video as a bit of a white pill, amidst the copious black pills out there. You need only look at the world. But yeah, I think right now is overall still a better time to be alive, especially as a young person, than it was in the early 20th century, especially as a man. I'd say the biggest difference and the biggest disadvantage is the mating market. Back then, you would have been guaranteed somebody. Now, somebody doesn't necessarily translate into happy wife, happy life, or anything like that. And you might not even got along particularly well with the person. But through arrangement or otherwise, you would have been put together with some woman, and you would have married her and popped kids out. And for a lot of guys, that's their life's wish. I mean, we are animals at the end of the day. We like to reproduce and replicate our DNA. It makes sense. But even there, think about it. Back then, if you were in a rotten relationship or a marriage, there was no escape. Now, if your relationship or marriage is terrible, and I mean legitimately, I don't mean that your spouse forgot to wash the dishes or something or forgot to hoover the floor. If your situation, relationship, marriage, otherwise is miserable, you can extricate yourself, and that's perfectly fine. You might be sad, the other person might be sad, but you're not going to garner the opprobrium of the entire society around you. And frankly speaking, I think that's a pretty good thing overall. So at the end of the day, everything's a double-edged sword, but it's important to bear in mind that the double edge is a double edge, and there are some nice things to the one edge, and there are some bad things to the other edge. In short, the good old days weren't always so good. Anyway, as always... Thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the best to keep the channel alive. Without you, this channel could not exist. And similar thanks to my donors on PayPal. And if you can leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, you'd be much appreciated. Until the next time, if I'm still alive, I'll check you out then. May the gods watch over you. Bye-bye for now. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.